Is it Pierre Solar or is it Pierre Solar? Do you think it's kind of depressing that there are no new video games for the great 16-bit video game systems? Well, guess what? There are still new games being made for those classic 16-bit video game systems like the Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo. What? Check this out. Something I recently acquired was Pierre Solar for the Sega Genesis or Sega Mega Drive. Pierre Solar and the Great Architects uh, Genesis Mega Drive game. Playable on any official Sega Genesis or Sega Mega Drive. And they haven't tested it for the clone systems. But I know it plays real well on my Sega Genesis. In fact, it's labeled as a Genesis Mega Drive game. Of course, it's not licensed by Sega because this game was produced or released in 2010. And this is the 2014 reprint edition. And this, well, people might think of it, oh, it's just a homebrew game. Uh, it's just the sort of thing you download for an emulator. No, this game's awesome. And you know what? It might have been made by a smaller video game company. But they did an awesome job. It's an actual cartridge in here with a really well-printed manual. And... Really nice done package. I've seen pictures. This is the reprint edition. I've seen the package they had for their original release. I actually kind of like the reprint edition a little bit more. So this game also is available as a download on various systems like uh, I believe the Xbox One, PlayStation 3, and PlayStation 4 are getting it, or have it. Uh, the, the Nintendo Wii U, I believe, has already received it. I myself, I wanted to play this on my all time favorite video game system, the Sega Genesis. This one is also coming out to the Sega Dreamcast sometime soon, which i, I got to check that out, the Dreamcast disc. And I also want to get the Sega CD disc for this. The Sega CD disc is actually an enhancement for the Genesis version. And games like this are out there. There's also one, uh, I think it's called Sydney Hunter, um, which is one coming out for the Super Nintendo, which I think people should look into because... Here's a chance to play Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo games made now. And for me, the only reason why I'm not buying brand new Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo games is because they don't make them anymore. Oh wait, they do! So, if you like the 16-bit era games and that technology and playing games on those specific controllers for those systems and playing more games on the lineup from games that came from that time period... Pierre Solar is definitely worth checking out. Uh, I'm pretty impressed by this. I recently got this copy right here. And I recommend checking it out. Uh, when I first read the story in the manual, I actually couldn't help think of Exile, because Exile had kind of a cool opening. And what's interesting is, when I got this, I looked up the company, Watermelon. They're developing a new Sega Genesis fighting game. And if you look into it, uh, it's still untitled. It's known as Project Y. I think the name is derived from Sega's Y Board Arcade system, uh, which probably, you know, similar to the Sega Genesis, I guess. Probably had a lot of fighting games. I'm not entirely sure about the title, but well, the title, the development title, is Project Y, if I remember correctly, and it's by Watermelon, a new fighting game. And while fighting games not might not be exactly my preference, role-playing games sure are. And the Sega Genesis sure was. The Sega Genesis is my all-time favorite video game system. It had Fantasy Star 4, it had Crusader Senti, other Fantasy Star games, and a lot more role-playing games. And the Sega Genesis, my favorite video game system for my favorite era of video games. The Sega Genesis, the Super Nintendo, and the Sega CD. And this game is actually fairly inspired by Lunar, the Lunar games for the Sega CD, which were, they were awesome. I, I, I'm i not sure where I'd rank the Sega CD, since I consider it part of the Sega Genesis, so it's part of my favorite line of video games ever. Uh, if I were to create it, put it separate, probably just behind the Super Nintendo. Uh, the Super Nintendo, of course, had uh, Chrono Trigger and the Illusion of Gaia, and a 
pretty cool lineup in addition to that. Sega CD didn't have as many games, but it had a lot of the most amazing games of the era. Uh, I, I was really impressed by that system. And this game started at life. They were planning to make this a Sega CD game, and something I plan to get soon, because I actually want to get the official disc. I, I believe they allow you to download a version of it, but there is a disc that you can place in your Sega CD, and you, this cartridge will access the Sega CD and read information from the Sega CD disc and have enhanced audio. Though the actual regular Genesis cartridge music for this is pretty impressive. Also, uh, well, also about this, if you have a 32X, and I do, there are, apparently there's a secret bonus you can find in the game if you have a 32X hooked up. So I, I recommend Pierre Solar to anybody who has a Sega Genesis. It's, it's a really impressive game. I love having a physical cartridge, and if you don't have a Sega Genesis, but you have a Sega Dreamcast, or if you have both, something I plan to look at myself is they're planning to release a Sega Dreamcast version of this. And of course, that'll have the enhanced visuals and audio and all that. So, to me, that's impressive. Something to look for is Pierre Solar, or Solar, or however... When I look at it, I want to pronounce it Solar, but yeah, it's Pierre Solar. I'm not sure how most people pronounce it. Anyway, awesome game. You could look for it coming to the Sega Dreamcast. And here it is. A Sega Genesis cartridge game. Physically produced and available. To me, that's awesome. So, in addition to this, and the fact that the guys who made this are making another Sega Genesis game, which is definitely worth checking out. I'm not the biggest fan of fighting games, I must admit that. But considering how awesome of a role-playing game this was, I'm sure I have a strong feeling that's going to be an interesting fighting game. And this game, you know, when I first read the manual and, and got a bit of the tone for it, it seemed like a, a little less confusing, a little less dark, but a little bit like Exile in tone, and definitely a lot like Lunar in tone. And the hints of Fantasy Star 4 in there, which is pretty awesome. Um, the lunar aspects could be compared to, I suppose, the Super Nintendo, ver Super Nintendo Final Fantasy 3, which a lot of people call Final Fantasy 6, but I'm not talking about the Super Famicom or PlayStation version, I'm talking about the Super Nintendo version, so I call it Final Fantasy 3, in the way that the characters fight, but it's really more inspired by lunar. Uh, yeah, this game was pretty cool, and you get a feeling, I haven't completed it yet, I've been preoccupied with other things that have been going on. It's a pretty cool game. I haven't completed it yet. I get the impression impression that the scope of it's going to become pretty big and impressive, kind of like Chrono Trigger or Fantasy Star 4. And this impressed me a lot. I really like this game. This might not be my all-time favorite 16-bit video game, but... It definitely feels appropriate setting on the shelf next to Illusion of Gaia and Chrono Trigger and Fantasy Star 4 and Fantasy Star 2 and Crusader Ascenti and even Fantasy Star 1, although that's technically 8-bit. Lunar and Exile take a bunch of awesome old 16-bit role-playing games and adventure role-playing games. Hell, even uh, Shining Force CD set that next to this. They all feel like they're appropriate setting next to each other. And an am amazing group of games this belongs with. This, some people dismiss it as a homebrew game. Well, I don't care who made it. They made it awesome. And there's a version of it coming to the Sega Dreamcast. And I'm probably sounding like an ad, and I don't mean to. But um, I just... I'm really impressed. I haven't completed it yet, but it's good. And it remains good. And it definitely belongs setting alongside some of the best role-playing games of the 16-bit era. I am quite happy with that game. And I think if you like games like that, those old 16-bit role-playing games, like Fantasy Star 4, Lunar, The Silver Star, Chrono Trigger, I think, I think then... Pierre Solar would be a good game for you. Pierre Solar and the Great Architects. Little small letters there for the Great Ar Architects. Made by Watermelon. 
And, oh yeah, they're also making a Nintendo game, Project N. I mentioned Project Y, another Sega Genesis game, or Sega Mega Drive game. They're, of course, it's going to get a physical cartridge release, too. And as will their Super Nintendo game, which is early in the development, apparently, from everything I read on it. Once I got that game, I had to see what else they were doing. So you can also look for a future Super Nintendo game from the same people who brought us PR Solar. That's pretty impressive to me. And what else is there? Well, when I was looking for classic games, uh, unfortunately I didn't find too much more about new uh, Genesis games. There's a Star Odyssey game out there that I want to look into. Uh, getting soon. Looks cool. Uh, it's a Sega Genesis role-playing game. But there's something else coming out, which I got my attention. A group called Collector Vision, a name kind of inspired by ColecoVision, which is actually pretty cool in and of itself, are making a new Super Nintendo game. The Super Nintendo, my third all-time favorite video game system. So that, that makes me happy. Um, yeah, well, it it looks like a sort of traditional action um, platformer. I'm not sure. You basically have a character that's capable of jumping and throwing boomerangs as their weapon. It's sort of a stereotypical 16-bit video game. More traditional 16-bit video game style play than a role-playing game could ever be. So if you want just a 16-bit video game that's new, that actually looks pretty cool and interesting. I'd recommend looking into it. By the time I get around to editing this and uploading it, I'm fairly hopeful that I will have ordered myself a copy of it, a pre-order. I want to get the blue cartridge. You can get light blue cartridges as sort of a special pre-order incentive. And I was like, yeah, I'd kind of like, I can't scrape up a lot of money right now, but I'd like to, you know, donate to the Kickstarter for this thing. It's actually being funded and got off the ground by a Kickstarter. Um, I'd kind of like to help with that, get a new 16-bit video game out there. Uh, Scraping up money at the moment wasn't the, is not the easiest thing for me, um, but I really want to do that, and I, I'm definitely looking into getting a special blue cartridge, because I just thought it looked cool, so if I can scrape up enough money to afford that, that's how I'm going to fund the Kickstarter. There's a lot of incentives that they're giving out to be a reason to fund the Kickstarter, and that looks pretty cool to me. The, the game looks like it's going to be fun. To me, I'm more into role-playing games than your traditional just playing action games and running around platform jumpers, but I like those more traditional 16-bit, stereotypical 16-bit era game. Uh, so, personally, I think I'm going to have fun with it when it is finally released, and I'm definitely lo looking forward to that. And they're doing other games in addition to it. But the game that I'm referring to, uh, Sydney Hunter. It looks like it'll be a cool game. And the chance to try a new Super Nintendo game is pretty impressive to me. And also, I myself have recently acquired Pierre Solar, and it's pretty impressive. This one is also coming out to the Sega Dreamcast sometime soon, which i, I got to check that out, the Dreamcast disc. And I also want to get the Sega CD disc for this. The Sega CD disc is actually an enhancement for the Genesis version, which is something that even at the time was never done. Normally the only cartridge you'd stick in the Sega Genesis slot while you're playing something being read from the Sega CD was a memory card, or memory cartridge they called it. This is pretty impressive that this game can be played off of a cartridge and access the Sega CD at the same time. When you think of that, the fact that they've done that with the Sega Genesis hardware, that's pretty impressive. It's, it's something that just wasn't done at the time. So when you think about it, if they created this game, Pierre, Solar, think of what they might do in the future. Hopefully more games, perhaps hopefully a sequel. This is pretty cool. I'm thinking, you know, when, when the game ends, it's going to be pretty good. But I'm thinking, I'm going to want to play more. And I'll probably play it again. In fact, I'm thinking about trying the Dreamcast version after I finish this. But I'm thinking this game already. I haven't finished the game yet. I already think this game deserves a sequel. So I recommend this. I think it's worth looking into the fact that this game is also coming to the Sega Dreamcast. The Sega Dreamcast was also one of my favorite video game systems. 
My second favorite era of video games is the one that includes Dreamcast, Xbox, and GameCube. My favorite was probably the would be the original Xbox. It's my second all-time favorite video game system, break behind the Sega Genesis. Uh, preferably with the original controller because I really dislike the controller S. But I really like the original controller. I also like the GameCube controller. The GameCube controller, I just wasn't happy with how small the D-pad was. But overall, the GameCube controller was also awesome. And the a lot of really interesting games came out for the Dreamcast. Many of which got re-released or sequels on the Xbox or GameCube. And the games that were on like multiple systems at the time, I usually preferred the Xbox version and the GameCube version second. But there were a lot of games from that era I really loved. And I really enjoyed the Xbox and the Dreamcast and the GameCube. So, the idea of having a, a Dreamcast disc that I can play on my Dreamcast, and it's playing this game here, to me, that's pretty impressive. So, I... I recommend Pierre Solar, and I also recommend looking into Collector Vision and some of their games. So Watermelon, who made Pierre Solar, I recommend them. I, I think they're worth checking out. And the same goes for Collector Vision. They also look like they have some interesting stuff going on. So really, that's all I can think of for my Neo Retro News for May of 2015, and hopefully I'm not so slow editing and uploading this that it's no longer May by the time I do so. And hopefully by the time I've uh, uploaded this, I've pre-ordered myself a copy of Sydney Hunter for the Super Nintendo. A special blue cartridge. That's what I want, a blue cartridge. I like blue. That's a good color for a Super Nintendo cartridge. And so far they're usually just gray, sometimes black or red. You know what, Watermelon? Should have made a blue cartridge version of PR Solar. I mean, this is pretty awesome. How, how even cooler would that have been? Hey, maybe the disc for the Dreamcast game will be blue. Hmm, probably not. I recommend... I recommend this. And I recommend you look into what's going on with Watermelon, who made PR Solar, as well as Collector Vision, because they look like they have some interesting stuff going on as well. Because... In the current generation of consoles, I do kind of like it when they release discs that have perfectly emulated, perfectly replaying versions of the old classic games. I like it even better when you get new games that can be played on the old classic hardware. That's even cooler. Well, if the month is over, then I guess it's already too late to get involved with the Kickstarter for the Sydney Hunter game. But still, check out the upcoming Sega Dreamcast version of Pear Solar. Or, better yet, check out the Sega Genesis version. And well, if you catch the Kickstarter for Sydney Hunter good, if not, well, take a look at it anyway. Looks like there's some cool games available from Collector Vision, as well as Watermelon.